Everyone, my name is Luke. This is the Outdoor Gear Review. Today, I have a field test with the Wooks A1X Hand Axe. This is a product which many of you have seen recently in an overnight adventure. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to use it. I received so many emails about this, and here I am today to share some information about it and to put it through its paces. Wooks is a company from North Carolina. In fact, not very far from where I live. The company is based in Hickory, North Carolina. The company contacted me asking if I would do a review and I told them that I wasn't sure if I had the time but I would take a look at it. And you pretty much know the story from there. I took this out to use it, didn't get to, lots of people wrote in about it, so here I am. Here I am. So this is the axe everyone. On my scale this comes in at 2.3 pounds. And let me tell you, this is one beautiful axe. The handle material is Appalachian Hickory, and this is available in two different colors and finishes. This is the Midnight Gray right here, and there is also a Walnut version. This is a Tomahawk style hand axe. And here in a moment, I will discuss with you the differences between hatchets, hand axes, and axes. The head material is tempered carbon steel, C45-1045. And the head is Cerakoted. The blade is three and one quarter inches long. And the overall length of this axe is 15.7 inches. What we have down here is a diamond heel for bashing, hammering, and whatnot. You have a leather lanyard, which assists with control. And up here towards the head, it has a leather wrapped collar. And essentially that protects the handle here so that when you're actually in the forest using this, you can increase the longevity of the handle itself. Instead of the handle taking some abuse, the leather does. So before we get out into the forest and put this through some paces, through some tests, let's talk about the differences between hatchets, hand axes, and axes. Essentially, a hatchet has a very short handle and is used one-handed. A hand axe has a longer handle, such as this, and is designed also to be used one-handed, but can be used two-handed. An axe has a full-length handle and is designed to be used with two hands. When it comes to my personal preference between hand axe and hatchet, hand axe just about always. While I don't mind a small hatchet, I do prefer the size and the capability of a hand axe myself. For this field test, I have numerous tests that I'm going to do with this hand axe, starting with chopping. Then I will go to splitting, multiple forms of splitting. Now, my initial impressions here are this is likely the sharpest axe I have ever seen in my entire life. The definition of this is scary sharp. It is absolutely unreal. <laughs> Honestly, this doesn't look like much, but let me tell you, it is. Black Locust is extremely tough and it will definitely push this axe. Okay, for the first chop, I'm very impressed. That was really, really easy. Let's go into the forest and find something more challenging. For the next chopping test, that is my target, and that's a big boy right there. That's gotta be about six and a half inches in diameter. It's good size. As you all could see, it is going through that nice and easy. I'm showing that to you, not because I need a break, but because it's impressive.
That is how strong this wood is. That little bit is holding up that entire tree. There we go. That's it. That is a very good cut right there. If you're an inexperienced outdoorsman, outdoorswoman, I would recommend getting down on your knees to split. But if you are experienced, you can stand. Something to keep in mind is that when you're using an ax of any type, it's not about strength and power. It's about finesse. It's about controlling the blade. And you will learn exactly what I'm talking about with enough experience. It's all about being able to deliver this ax head to your target safely, but with enough control to get the job done. Practice makes perfect. Do be safe. Okay, so make sure to read the piece of wood and let's go. Exactly the same strike zone every single time. Now you all can see just how big this is. So we will now flip it over. And now that we have a crack all the way through, Done. So moving on to something very, very big. If you don't have wedges to work your way through this, the key is to essentially go around this. working my way around. Now flip it over, do the same thing. One piece. He's two. And just like that, you've made that much more manageable. All right, moving on to side splitting. That was a pretty short piece right there. Now that we're done with splitting, let's see how well it does with finer camp chores. Let's see how well it does with shaving. Tell you what, it is so sharp. Look at how easy it does that. Because it's so sharp, you can dig into it as much as you want or as little. As you can see right here, there's some jimping, but The placement isn't very good in my opinion. This is not a very good handhold point. You do not have really good control from this position. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the blade and I'm getting rid of all of the sharp edges that would typically hurt your hand and limit your control over the baton. You can see how easily it is to make tools. That's a nice baton right there. 
Over the last couple of hours, last couple of minutes for you all, I have definitely put this through some serious tests. And let's talk about those and how well it performed. When it comes to chopping, it did an amazing job. That large locust was huge. It was huge. And that is a fine testament. If any ax, any hatchet can go through that, it is super, super sharp. This is, without a doubt, incredibly, incredibly sharp. The edge is held up extremely well. No wear and tear at all, no rolling. The Cerakote is definitely dirty, but it's still present. The leather collar has done its job. There's no doubt about that. Already it's pretty scuffed up. The one thing that I have an issue with when it comes to the collar is that it rotates as you're using the ax. It rotates all the way around, and if you're not careful, you'll smash this end and potentially break these little tabs off. If that happens, the collar is going to fall off. So you really have to pay attention, make sure to correct that ever so often. The jumping here on the side looks cool. It's not very deep. It's not very effective. The leather lanyard does a good job. You can slide your hand through, wrap it, and then rock and roll. The heel here has a time and a place. It definitely does its job. <laughs> The collar did slide down though about an inch and a quarter. Ah, there we go. When it comes to splitting, this did a fantastic job. It went through everything that I threw at it. Large pieces, small pieces, side chopping, standing. When it comes to finer skills, such as feather sticks, camp work, really harnessing that blade, incredible. I mean, it's so sharp. With the proper control, there's nothing that you can't do with this. The strike guidance with the head here is excellent. At no point in time did I notice it pulling towards the left or the right. Just straight on every single time. That's pretty important because not all axes, not all hatchets are created equal in that regards. The handle itself is excellent. It is nice and smooth. It's very comfortable. You can easily slide your hand to the position that you need, but when you're gripping it hard enough, it doesn't go flying around either. Also, it does a good job of absorbing impacts when you're striking. Talking about issues, I already talked about the jimping not being the best. Also, this sheath, which costs $70, unfortunately, this is not included with your purchase. In fact, no sheath is included with your ax. At least some sort of blade protection should have been included with this ax, especially for the price. Now, let's talk about cost here for a second because this hand ax is extremely, extremely expensive. This is, without a doubt, on the highest of ends in terms of cost. This has a retail price of $230, and it does not include a sheath. You can buy the best of brands of full-size axes for much, much less than this. I do think that the price is extremely high. The quality is very, very good, though. The design is excellent. It's a beautiful tool. But that's the question. Can you pay $230 for a tool? Considering the fact that you can purchase a very good hand axe for 50 bucks, for $100 you can get an incredible one. Please understand this. This is just a preview. This is just a field test one day. I will test this out for months and months, as I usually do. I don't do lazy reviews here on the channel. So everyone, that pretty much wraps it up for the first look, the first field test with this tool. Make sure to comment down below, share your thoughts. What do you all think about the looks? What do you all think about the performance? For myself, this is without a doubt one of the best performers that I've used in a long time. It went through every single test with ease, but at a cost, at a cost. Before I end this video, I would like to get some feedback from you all. This is a very expensive hand axe, and I would like to hear from you all, what inexpensive hand axe would you like to see me purchase and get out here to do a field test with? What product are you interested in seeing? So head over to Amazon right now, do a search, Tell me which one that you like and I will order it. I will get it in. Every single piece of gear that I use and review is based upon your feedback. Basically, I get in the products that you all request. So make sure to comment down below, share your thoughts, and I will get it in. Thank you all for joining me for this episode. I will see you all around. Take care. Strength and honor.